keep it in my opinion, family, it's your boy L-A-P-A, coming through with another video, some content for your mind, you already know, man, the reasons that we're here, for the youngsters, the reoffenders, man, you guys already know what we're trying to do, man, trying to keep them tails, keep them out of the system or from going back, and as you can tell by the good old caption, that unya, 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 that thumbnail, the homies get off on the sergeant, um, so I wanted to tell the story, man, um, because, uh, you know, I told the Corkin stories, uh, New Corkin riots, all that. And at the time, man, like I said before, man, I was in Sentinela, man. My cell was in Verdugo Flats. And we were chilling with dinner right there in the cell. I'm getting ready to go uh, to uh, to New Corcoran, get my endorsement papers and all that, man. And uh, at the time, man, I-, I wanted to add new details to this, even though the core of the story is what transpired with the with the homies, but I wanted to add a few more details as far as I was a youngster, man. I was a youngster, man. Yeah, even though I was a veteran in my hood, as far as putting in work, things like that, I was still a youngster and a rookie when it came to the prison system, man. Um, I had already done a shoe term, of course, but that was still the on, only the third prison I had been to. One of them being a reception, and the last person having only been there shortly when I got an adverse transfer. Um, so Sentinella was like the first main line for me. And as I'm, I'm waiting to transfer, my Sally, I get my endorsement, and my Sally tells me, um, Yeah, when well, you're going to New Corcoran, you know, you're going to New Corcoran, um, sad F, and he starts running me down. He had, he had, that's where he had came from. Um, and, you know, he tells me, man, the structure over there is solid. Um, the camaradas are good. He's, um, every, the unit is good. He's like, there's Norteños up there. You know, from what I believe, we're still programming when I left. And he's like, that's been two years. So he's like, it's probably going to kick off. You know, that's not the story for this video, but that's the type of things he was telling me. He's like, as far as the pegadas, there's going to be a lot of searches. Corcoran is known as the search prison. Corcoran and New Corcoran. They're in the same perimeter, Corcoran Shoe, all that, where the infamous Charles Man- Charles Manson was for decades and decades. Um, but yeah, man, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm thinking like, okay, well, you know, fuck, I kind of, I'm a little apprehensive, but for the most part, I'm excited. It's, it's a trip to say, but I was excited that I was gonna make it to the big time. You know what I'm saying? Like going to a 180, like that's the highest GP level four mainline that you could go, aside from the shoe. You know, and you don't want to be in the shoe for the most part if you've already been there. Um, but even then, I was like, I want to go to the shoe too. You know, it's just part of a criminal's career. You know what I'm saying? If you believe in the cause and you want to shine for your Mario, like that's, that's, it's part of the plan. You're supposed to be there, right? Um, so he, he laces me up, like I said, and then I'm on my way to Corcoran. I'm on my way to Corcoran. When I get there, man, it was a whole different environment, man. Big ass concrete wall in the middle, dividing four blocks and four blocks on each side, one through eight block, divided in half. And I'm getting there, man, and the cops are on the catwalk. It's nighttime. We're walking in the line, handcuffed, whatnot. And it's just a different atmosphere, man, for those of you that haven't been there. Um, so I get there. When I get there, um, obviously, one of the first things that happens when I get there is there were some issues that have been going on with a sergeant at Corcoran. And uh, for anybody that knows the system, like, taking off on a cop is not a regular thing for us. Maybe in Calipatria, but not not, not anywhere else in the system because it's very detrimental to the cause. Meaning, they're going to fuck with the, with, they're going to fuck with the senioritis, they're going to fuck with the main, with the mess, they're going to fuck with the dudes, shut everything down, no money's going to be made. So it's just bad all around. Not to mention that that you know the dudes that do the deed are gonna get probably get beat the shit down. See, the difference between COs and, and and county deputies, at least at that time, the county deputies will beat the shit out of you. They'll kill you for no goddamn reason, right? And it wasn't until an FBI agent went in there uh, and got caught uh, by one of these deputies and got his ass whooped. That's when they got caught, the deputies. And now I hear them a lot better. But in prison, the COs know better than that. They don't fuck with you. But if you put your hands on one of them, boy, you're going to get an ass whooping of a lifetime. Because it's almost like they wait. You know, it's almost like they wait for the justification of putting hands on you 
and and rightfully so i guess you know if somebody put your hands on you man shit, give him give him hell right and so a couple of the camaradas man were tasked with a certain holly and a certain sergeant was uh very disrespectful doing his thing he fucked up so the homies run in there they wait they're all in the freaking uh and the by the program office doing the thing as soon as they got the first chance they ran in there and took off on the sergeant they took off on the sergeant smash dash did all that shit and, and, and you know put it down now these two come out all as i know that and since they're still active i can't say no names um but the the the, the atmosphere of ha that having happened when i get there it's just like when i'm there i mean they lock us down we're on lockdown whatever you know obviously they deem it an isolated incident even though it wasn't um it kind of set the tone for me it set the tone for me like damn i just arrived i just arrived and when i got there as well uh the whites the blacks were going at it the whites and the blacks were going at it um and uh there are the reasons why we couldn't have no sodas it's a trip man because you know, you could get to one of the most violent environments ever. And if you're used to that shit, you're immune to violence. And you already that's already embedded in your in your genetic code, so to speak. Um, you worry about the small shit. And the small shit, in this case, being sodas. We had the plastic bottles of sodas, right? And I wanted a soda. And I found out that the, they weren't selling sodas in the canteen because... The whites and the blacks were melting them down to make weapons at any cost. You know, shit, if you met, you guys already know, man. Come on, you know, like you don't have to have a steel weapon to do some damage. If you melt down plastic, and we, I made several of those weapons. You met, you melt down plastic the right way. You sharpen it, stiff, nice and sturdy. You could poke an eye out. You know what I'm saying? Or at least deter somebody from coming at you. So they took the sodas away from us because of that shit. And I remember thinking like these fuckers, man, you know, but hey, business is business, you know, as just the nature of the beast, the nature of the game. And, you know, you have to roll with the punches, man. There's a lot of things that you're sacrificing there, you know, when, especially on a lockdown prison like that. Every every lockdown, every search, anytime there was an incident that involved a weapon, we got slammed down automatically three week, three and a half weeks to a month. <clears throat> and they took the sweet ass time because the seals are getting hazard pay and granted the seals don't like searching because they're lazy as hell but some of them do you know some of them like searching um but the, the fact of the matter is that they try to they, they try to milk it the longer they could go searching the more hazard pay they got and uh they went from one block to two block to three block to four block Five blocks, six blocks, seven blocks. Sometimes they used to jump back to a block that they already searched just to catch dudes slipping. And they would. Because they know, man, when, when, when the search is coming, um, and that's kind of my point in this video. I'm telling them how the homie, two homies rushed the sergeant's office. Because a lot of bad could come from putting your hands on a cop. And that's exactly what happened after, man. And they jumped back to a block they had already searched because they know that they know that we know that they're coming and we have stash spots and they know that they're not always going to be able to find the stash spots and they know that they're not always going to be able to find everything so they try to catch a slip and in this case they jumped back to a, the block they had searched already i think it was six block um and they found a bunch of shit, man they found a bunch of weapons everything they caught the homie slipping everybody's slipping really gang of dudes got snatched up went to the hole but that's the type of shit that happens man when dudes, uh, uh, when dudes decide to put their hands on COs, sergeants, shit like that. But that, not only that, but the backdrop, like I said, that was my introduction to that prison. And then obviously you guys know shortly thereafter, um, the Corcoran riot kicked off, Father's Day massacre uh, in June of 2009, Norteños versus Sureños. And if you guys have not checked out that story, go check out that story in my videos. But I just wanted, for, for the youngsters out there, you guys already know I have a lesson. I don't glorify this shit not proud of it i ain't none of that i'm trying to give these stories out there my experiences so that the youngsters could realize that life is not cool in there it's not cool in there and even though you may think that you reached the pinnacle in your life it's it, it will all eventually be for nothing 
It's better to stay out there, take care of your family, take care of your business. Thank you guys for tapping in, man. Appreciate it. every single moment and second of your life that you take to watch one of my videos. I know you could be doing something else. Go check me out on TikTok, man, and Prisoners Awakening as well. We're doing good things over there. Uh, like the video, subscribe. Most importantly, drop a comment and try to share if you can. Because I know there's people out there that need to see this. And if you have a youngster out there that's in, in trouble, a troubled youth, maybe you should listen, have them listen to some of these stories, man. Because trust me, from somebody that's been there, that is not the place to be. And that being said, man, one life saved is one life blessed. A smart man learns from his mistakes, but a wise man learns from other people's mistakes. APA, I'm out. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys.